It's always a good time to avoid the hustle and bustle of the grocery store, not to mention the crowds. HelloFresh delivers everything you need to get dinner on your table directly to your door, contact-free. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use the code footballers12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. This is Kyle Juszczyk from the San Francisco 49ers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. I'm your host today, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright. Andy is off for the day. But you know what that means. Oh, yeah. The best friends are back. We are the best friends, and we're going to talk about football. We're going to talk about the top 10 running backs for this season, which is always a fun topic. We get to hear from Kyle Juszczyk, and we got a bear. The cardboard bear extraordinaire is back holding it down. Now, Jason, you had missed a show uh, a little bit in the past. Yes. And so, of course, Jay Grizz. He shows up, he has to hold it down, and we end up talking about Jay Grizz and his book that he always travels with. The Salmon Way. And word got out to the author That's right. of The Salmon Way, and we were thanked for the, the nice plug of their book. I hope it's a number one bestseller. Best um, just, uh, you know, keep the, the children's eyes away, <laughs> you know? It's a, gr- a graphic, brutal book. So crazy, small world, how that happens. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Please follow us on social media at the FF Ballers on Twitter. Jason is at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman, and you can find Andy at Andy Holloway. Uh, the three of us, same handles on Instagram, but the main show is Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. My best, best friend, he said it. We're going to be talking about our early top 10 rankings. We are also joined. By the juice, the juice, Kyle Juszczyk of the San Francisco 49ers, superstar Great fullback. friend of the show. Great friend of the show, superstar fullback. Kind of wish he was a Cardinal, but he's on the 49ers. Great player. We're going to talk to him, get his takes on uh, you know, his offseason, talk about a little bit of fantasy. But we're going to get into the news, Jason. News and notes from around the league. A little bit lighter on the news in, yeah. term, in terms of it's nothing here is real heavy hitting, but at the same time, there could actually be repercussions from a few of these. Veteran running back Giovanni Bernard, who was freshly released by the Cincinnati Bengals, he is signing a one-year deal with the Buccaneers. Mm. Personally reached out to by Tom Brady and Bruce Arians, who had just hyped up Keyshawn Vaughn as having a breakout year, and then he's like, oh, wait, I didn't know Gio <laughs> Bernard was available. Do, do we have a timestamp on that statement? Uh, Yeah, it was like a week and a half But ago. it had to be before the cut it happened. It was before the cut happened. Um, And, and this does have fantasy repercussions, yes. right? Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette, these were interesting mid-late-round picks who now, you know, look, my dynasty team where I'm, I was the champ champ. Right. Whew. It's tough in the streets, man. My my uh, my wide receiving core is amazing, but my running backs are right now David Johnson and Leonard Fournette. So Giovanni Bernard has not been kind to me to today. And you could see many times the 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 visible frustration on Tom Brady's face as his running backs let him down in the passing game. I mean, Ronald Jones, look, that's just that's not who he is as a player. Leonard Fournette can catch the ball and everything, but Giovanni Bernard is at least a pass catching running back. Uh, I think he just muddles things up far more than he'll have standalone value. It really feels like an indictment and a whoopsies on the Keyshawn Vaughn draft pick, third round pick last year. Uh, seems like the Bucks are just going to try and pretend that that did not happen. The Eagles have re signed Jordan Howard. It's a one year contract. This one, I'm not. You know, it's it is what it is. You got to have some depth. Uh, Miles Sanders is still the guy. You're talking. This is a new regime 
uh, that's going to be calling some plays. So we'll see if Jordan Howard has anything left for them. You, you mean the Dolphins' leading uh, touchdown rushing scorer last year, that's, Jordan Howard? I, w I was going to say it more eloquently than that, <laughs> uh, but you came in and you, you swooped in and you crushed it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Patriots have uh, – and, and this, i got to read the quote the way it came out. The Patriots have terminated – terminated the contract of wide receiver Julian Edelman per the wire uh he's listed as a failed physical unfortunately Jules had he burned really bright and has just been his body has betrayed him he his body no longer wants to play football and he will and, be signing with the Buccaneers in well three <laughs> maybe if, if he does if he goes anywhere you know he's going to the Bucks however there is expectation out there that this is a technicality and he's going to retire that I would, makes sense. I would not blame Jules at all if he retires. And here's a fun bit of news. Free agent running back James Conner is visiting with the Cardinals on Monday, and they have the Cardinals got to bring him in because they, they have to get him a, a, uh, a physical for James Conner because he had to go uh, undergo surgery to repair a moderate moderate turf toe oh, no i don't remember him dealing with that much last year he did not he did not deal with that i mean he had plenty of other injuries yes yes he did have those but this injury of the turf toe occurred while riding a recreational vehicle full recovery expected by june oh good um now i i will say this watching james connor last year was not a treat it was watching someone who was injured yeah and now he's getting injured driving cars <laughs> so it's like <laughs> Uh, now, as a Cardinals fan, I am not excited about the prospect of signing James Conner. Like, this doesn't have to – we we can talk uh, Chase Edmonds, too, really quick. But a recreational vehicle, that's not necessarily – like, it doesn't have to be a golf cart, right? This could be – he could be on a, an actual, like, a go-kart. Oh, yeah, ATV or something or that actually has speed. Yes. So, the, it's not, we're, we're joking about it, but – there's there's vehicles out there that go fast enough that I'm sure I could get turf toe on. Yeah, re it. you could you could unfortunately you could die on a recreational vehicle. That but that's is true. that's not as funny as that is, getting yeah. turf toe. Yeah, Jason, this is a a uh, a lighthearted show. I don't know why you went right to that. Well, no, I'm I'm trying to keep it in the turf toe level. <laughs> so, you <laughs> okay. know, that's hysterical. Okay, okay. Uh but so let's talk implications. If James Conner is to sign uh in in this week, how does that change your view of Chase Edmonds uh, is Edmonds the guy? Is do you see timeshare? Is James Conner the guy? So uh, my view of of Chase Edmonds would would skyrocket if James Conner was actually signed because I think if Conner comes in, you're going to have a timeshare. You're going to have uh, you know a, a fifty fifty. I I couldn't even tell you which guy would be in the lead. We'd have to see the money that they're paying James Conner, but you add to that. The fact that Connor hasn't been able to he's stay not going to get much money, and in, in which case, if Connor is, if Connor stops them from drafting a high draft capital running back in the draft, and then he isn't on the field, Chase Edmonds is going to be very valuable for fantasy. And when I say he skyrockets up my board, I I mean that by comparison to where I currently view Chase Edmonds, which is not as the starter, even though he's clearly right now the only right guy in town. But I expect the Cardinals right now to use a day two pick on a running back yeah I'm with you that if you bring in someone like Connor who has had success if he's healthy I think that Connor can still get it done that's a big if uh but if the Cardinals do bring in James Connor that seems like a, a a big enough addition to the running back room that they might not use the the second round pick on one of the one of the running backs if if one of the big three happens to fall to them in the second round. So I'm with you that it would improve the outlook for well, Chase. Evans what about the value me. of James Conner? Would he have any, I mean, I mean, where, where would you be drafting James Conner? What would your expectation for his, let, let's say hysterically that he plays the whole season. Wh sure. what, what do you think he would finish? Cause you saw Kenyon Drake have an enormous amount of opportunities. Yes. And uh, James Conner would immediately become a incredibly interesting zero running back target. Like if you're out there, playing in best ball right now and you're like I don't I don't know where Connor's going in best ball if he's being drafted at all but if you're grabbing him with with your last pick we're you know we're talking about running backs and as we're looking at all the running backs Jay what was the number of the top 20 finishing yeah, so running backs la last season there the top 20 
running backs in fantasy football, how many of them actually played 16 games? The answer is two. Only right. two of the top 20 uh, running backs don't play 16. I mean, that's just the reality. You know, we, we'll we talk about, oh, this guy did it in 14 games. Yeah, because that's how many games running backs play. Like That's not going to stop me from being excited about saying someone did it in 14 oh, games. Oh, no. It, it, the numbers sound better when you extrapolate it to 16 games. Um, but, yeah, I, I think James Conner could be mildly interesting when he's on the field. But he, he, he did look like he lost a lot of what he used to have. And yeah. we know he's dealt with a, an, an enormous amount of injuries. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not excited about this as a Cardinals fan. Yeah. But he, he would be in line for a, a huge opportunity bump. Should he actually sign to the Cardinals? And it, yeah, and, like if he Chase doesn't sign with the Cardinals, there, who else is going out signing yeah, James know. Connor right now? One other piece of news, uh, it's not in here. I find it interesting more for our dynasty players. Okay. Thaddeus Moss has, uh, this is tight end, tight end Thaddeus that Moss. people have probably not many people know. Son of Randy Moss. People know who that people is. People know yeah. who that is. Um, he, he was released from the Washington football team. He was claimed through the waiver system by the Cincinnati Bengals. That puts him back with his college teammate, Joe Burrow. That's where he was uh, you know, a, a really highly touted college prospect at the tight end position. So, um, you know, th that doesn't necessarily take them out of the ability to draft Kyle Pitts, but sure. I do think if, you know, uh, Sewell or, or Pitts are on the board, and now they've got Thaddeus Moss from well, and, and Jamar Chase is one of their targets. As sure, well. so it's just interesting to me. All right, let's talk running backs. Running backs. Number one, Jason. Who do you think's at the top of the list? I think it's the same person for you, for me, for Andy, for Jay Grizz. Even he won't put David Montgomery ahead of him. <laughs> Uh, Christian McCaffrey. He that is, is correct. He's so good. It doesn't matter that he was injured. <laughs> like we said, a lot of running backs miss games. Um, and Christian McCaffrey is so far and away better for fantasy football than the next closest player. It's it's really, really, really not fair. Yeah, uh, 100%. I agree. Uh, in 2018 and 19, he played over 90% of the snaps. He is averaging over 100 receptions in his three full seasons. He's the number one guy. He will be played like that. If you look at what he did in his just his three games, mm -hmm. I mean, that the coaching we don't have to to worry. To me, that sample is extremely small, but large enough for me to say, okay, head coach Matt Ja Rule murder is all about Christian McCaffrey living living that life where McCaffrey's the entire running back team. Well, and, and not only that, Mike Davis is gone. So, like, Christian McCaffrey right. will go right back into that 90-plus percent of snaps role. Um, and it, had he missed the entire season, then we would have a lot of questions because we'd say we still haven't seen how this team is, you know, sure. and, and this coaching staff is going to use CMC. But he had three games. He was the running back two, the running back six, the running back two in the three games that he was on the field. On the In the other games – Mike Davis was fantasy relevant, and he is not good. So uh, you know, I, I, I'm you know, I mean, look, he's he's gonna beat me in a forty, uh, but he's not a great prospect here. Remember he's when he was? Be, that's that's the only dap you're gonna give. Well, he's a little bit faster than me, but that's where the differences yeah, stop. Like I'm not gonna go to a push-up contest because that could be close, <laughs> but like you know, straight line speed. <laughs> I think that's you know that's fair. He'll he'll win. Um. But, I mean, I remember when he was back with uh, David Montgomery and the Chicago Bears couldn't even get on the field and was... Well, he started. Right. He that's, started that's week true. one. He started week one. But my point is, with, with Mike Davis out of the way, with Curtis Samuel gone, the targets, the opportunities are, are there for him. He's going to be the number one running back on a per-game basis. It will happen. At number two, Dalvin Cook of the Minnesota Vikings. It is unanimous across the board. All three of us have him as the number two guy. He is a true workhorse running back, which is is pretty rare uh, and incredibly effective. He had the most goal line carries in 2020, except for that, oh my goodness, the freaking championship weekend where they kept rope-a-doping and throwing touchdowns to Irv Smith. I'm just yeah. sorry. I'm just <laughs> having bad flashbacks. Yeah, you weren't even happy though I won, during, that, during no. those moments. Oh, I was extremely tilted, but... Most goal line carries, 66 red zone touches. That is the most in 2020. He's still incredibly elusive, the second most evaded tackles. 
Dalvin Cook is great. We're not overthinking that. I will give a a, a bit of context, and let's let's uh, you can see if you agree with me here, Jason. Our keeper league, which we've we've talked about before, we have some unique rules. There's three total keepers. You can select a franchise player, and that player is on your team no matter what. Then after that, you pick three players, and they go into a lottery, and you get two of them. Here's the, the slight complication. The players in your lottery cannot match the position of the franchise player. So, so if you take Dalvin Cook and franchise him, you cannot also try to keep Ezekiel Elliott. Correct. You'd have to pick other players. I'd have to put him into the lottery and possibly lose them. So do you have a decision to make here? I Well, then, uh, this is where I am right now. Okay. So Dalvin Cook is so important to fantasy football teams that right now I am franchising him uh, instead of something I could do is risk it in the lottery with Dalvin Cook, Miles Sanders, and Antonio Gibson. Oh, so, oh, like, theoretically, I could be starting in a keeper league with Dalvin and Miles or Dalvin and Antonio Gibson. I would prefer. Who would your franchise player be in that situation? Uh, it would be Calvin Ridley. <sighs> so I could I could risk it, but as of right now, the way I'm looking at it is. I don't even want to risk losing Dalvin Cook, uh, f even for the, uh, the the huge upside opportunity if I come out on the right side of the lottery. That's how important I view Dalvin Cook to a team. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with you in the sense that he is valuable enough to do that. Um, I would probably take the risk i would because you don't have the guys and you're you don't, right. you're not actually from the, looking out, at from the, the outside it's like yeah no risk it no biscuits easy to say <laughs> like it's a 33 percent chance yeah i mean the only thing negative you can say on dalvin cook uh gary kubiak is gone uh, uh you know an offensive line and run scheme mastermind but it's another kubiak taking the place so i i expect that that will uh, you know, will hold up and the run scheme will be fine. The big flag on Dalvin Cook has always been injuries. Um, the difference between like what we were talking about with James Conner's injuries is that they took a toll on him where you saw when he was on the field that he wasn't the same as he used to be. Right. Every time Dalvin Cook's on the field, mm -hmm. he's fantastic. So we're not going to, I'm not going to worry about running back injuries. When I look through my, especially if we're talking the top 10 guys, like I want the upside. I want the highest scoring player per game. And that puts Dalvin cook number two. Before we jump into the number three running back, Jason, and this is where our rankings actually start to differ already at the third running back, which I find to be pretty fascinating because, you know, usually there's a big three, big mm -hmm. four, but we're already, uh, have a difference of opinion. Want to thank today's sponsor, Boom Boom Pow, Jason. Pow. It's Fight Camp. They are back. You've heard them sponsoring uh, the fantasy footballers here. It, it, they are a, a – a, it's a great product. It's a great way to stay fit because we're all trying to keep it tight, keep it bright, work on that fitness, get that cardio up, and why not beat the crap out of a, out of a boxing bag or, you know, while you're at it? I don't, oh, yeah. I don't think they call it a boxing bag, but – you I'm just gonna, get to hit something. That's right. And look, get that aggression out while staying fit, and they help you. They teach you. You ever wanted to learn how to box or kickbox from real fighters? Do you want your kids involved in a fitness journey with you while teaching them a valuable skill? Do you ever feel like you want to punch something? This is what, this yeah, is what Fight yeah, Camp is. It's all about. The, so you can get the gear, you get the app, and it's made for beginners to experienced boxers who want to box from home with the new content being released weekly from easy too advanced. It comes with all the gear you need to box at home. You get a, a, a freestanding punching bag, boxing gloves, quick hand wraps, and their unique punch tracking sensors that show you in real time and progress your your progress and your stats on any iOS device. Like I said, it's great for kids as well. Check out the app with over 600 workouts and tutorials. And right now, you can pay for your fight camp over 24 months for less than the cost of a boxing gym and get it right away. Plus, Fight Camp offers free shipping with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers to get free shipping on Fight Camp. Go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. That's joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Work on your fitness and punch something. Boom, boom, pow. And we also want to thank Manly Bands. I remember when I was getting engaged and getting married and – the amount of work that I put into finding my wife's ring, you know, the yes. cut, the clarity, yes. 
color the everything it just mattered so much and then i went the, to get the five c's that's right and then i went to get my band and was like so what who cares i don't know all that one that one's fine just to throw it in and it's not fair i don't think that they do and they just like flick it at you right They're like here you go Bing. yeah we'll throw this one in you know for a couple hundred dollars and you don't even care because you, you I, I didn't care about myself <laughs> you know what I mean? But like manly bands, if you catch the ring options suck. If well, that's true. They all were were stupid. Manly bands are actually awesome bands. They have dinosaur bone bands. They have meteorite bands. And honestly, all of their normal like non outer space uh, crazy bands are awesome. My personal favorite, the one that I decided to get, is called the Baller. Oh, that's our brand. Baller. I mean, you got to check them out. They ship free worldwide, 30-day exchange policy. To order Manly Bands and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash footballers. That's manlybands.com slash footballers. Code footballers for 21% off Manly Bands, the best rings, period. All right, Jay. I've got him number three. You have him number three. Oh, sounds like we're smart. But Andy... Has him number five. Ugh. Andy has thrown Kamara into a body bag and said, enough of you. You're too super. He's got two players in, in front of Alvin Kamara. Jason, talk to me why you are still in on Alvin Kamara being a an elite option. And, and let me throw in also answer this question too. He has, he's number three. You know, you would take Dalvin Cook above him. But do you still consider Alvin Kamara in that tier up there with Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey. No, I, I would say that Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey stand alone in the top tier. Alvin Kamara has been awesome, um, but there are some worries that you have to, you know, you, you can't just blindly say, well, he's always been great, so he's going to be great. Um, Sean Payton's offense has been un fathomably good for the running back position as a whole the 10 years of running back domination yes. for uh, them you know they were first in 2012 third and 13 you're second. talking total points total to the fantasy running back. points to the to the running back position they literally here i'll just read from 2012 first third second 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 first first 11th first that's unbelievable now that is a drew Brees, sean payton led saints so there's a big question and what i saw last year in the four games with Taysom Hill led me to believe that Alvin Kamara will be fine. And you might say, well, why? He was much worse in those four games. He was, but there was a progression to it. Those first few games, if you remember, like Alvin Kamara, I think in the first game that Taysom Hill played, he didn't get a target. Ah, target. This right. is a guy who's like averaging, you know, seven targets a game, like a wide receiver, and he didn't get a single target. And then the next week it was like, one target, two targets, but that fourth week with Taysom, he got 10 targets and he was a valuable piece of the offense. I expect that they're going to get a weapon like Alvin Kamara, the ball, the way he needs to and continue on. I saw nothing on film to say that he would take a step back. And if anything, they need him more than ever. So I, I really believe in Alvin Kamara. He's just too efficient. Um, and when you're, when you're too efficient, sometimes you go, well, you're going to regress. But he's done it his entire, every single year. At some point, you have to say, this is just who he is. Do you have any concerns, whether it's Taysom or Jameis, or is it simply Kamara's your number three guy, you believe in the team that they'll figure out how to get in the ball? It, it's it's that one. I, I, don't, I don't sit there and say, well, Jameis will get the ball to the running back better than Taysom will, or Taysom will more than uh, Jameis will. The truth is, I think that they are going to make the best decision for their team and put the better quarterback out that's going to put them in position to score more. And in the end, that's going to be the best case scenario for Alvin Kamara. I do, again, think he's a step down from that top tier. Um, he would be, you know, my tier two. At number four, it's time for Jason to be the hater. Number four, Derek Henry the Yeti who transforms each and every year and carries people to fantasy championships. Andy has him at number three, so Andy has, prefers Derrick Henry to Alvin Kamara. I have Henry at number four. Jason. Yes. Six? What are you doing? It doesn't. What are you doing? It doesn't feel good, but I 
I, you know, I, I look at yourself. I looked at it today in preparation for this show to make sure that's where I wanted him. And it is, um, look, he's back to back top three running back. So you go, well, why is he your running back six? He gets the ball a ton and yada, yada. He's, Over the last two seasons, 340 carries almost 1800 rushing yards. This is what he's he's averaging. Yeah, no, he's he's unbelievable. And this isn't a knock against Derrick Henry. This isn't me saying I don't think Derrick Henry is good. This is me saying I think there are six great running backs this year. Saquon Barkley coming back and some of these other running backs that uh you know I think catch the ball more and uh, have uh you know the ability to not be game scripted out. And you I also have a little bit of worry with the Tennessee offense. It's very shallow um and, sure and it's one of those things where they've been exceptionally healthy Derrick Henry we just talked about right like Derrick Henry was one of the two running backs in the top 20 who didn't miss a single game last year wait what and he has uh Is that uh, no Derrick Henry missed a game right I do not believe so um or my stat is wrong oh no you are you are correct. in fact if you go back to his you know rookie year I think he missed one game one other time so so you can say oh that's amazing he is a you know an iron man and, and that should be a, a plus for him but every running back I don't care who you are there's no running back in the history of the game that doesn't get injured and, and miss time um and on the flip side if AJ Brown were to get injured you know you saw AJ Brown miss the first sure. three games last year, they had that weird week four bye week. Th that first month of the season, Derrick Henry was the running back 20. So, I, I, you know, he can be game scripted out with the not being involved in the passing game. I love him. I'm not trying to make an argument against him. But that's why when I look at, okay, Saquon Barkley or some of these other guys that I've got ahead of him, I think that, you know, I'd rather have the pass catching option. And when, it, when push comes to shove and I'm on the clock, I'm going to take Saquon. Really? I am. Man, I, I can't. You're down on Saquon, right? Are, I, of the I lowest have, of the three of us? Yeah, I am the lowest of the, of the three. We're going we're gonna to talk about Saquon next. So I, I am slightly lower, but, and again, it's not because I don't like Barkley, but I prefer these other guys. And Derrick Henry, what he, the, the consistency that Derrick Henry has put up the, the last couple of years, I mean, it, it's really outrageous. For, and I'm with you. I want my running backs to be pass catchers, but I am just – I've learned to embrace the outlier mm -hmm. that Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb are. I've just – I have accepted it. I have let it wash over me. It's not how I prefer it, but that's how it is because they get it done. Next on the list, number five, Saquon Barkley from the New York Giants. He will be returning – uh, an unfortunate situation where he tore his ACL. It was like, and right after he had a hand injury or, or something too, it was, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, he got knocked out of the game. Right. And it was like, oh crap, what happened to Saquon? And then he came back in a few plays. And, only, then, he got the... and then it was, then it was far worse towards ACL. He was out. He is elite. He does see 22 opportunities per game. So he gets the workload, but how, it, it, explain to me why you're so confident in Saquon Barkley over someone like Derrick Henry. Uh, I look Saquon Barkley's obviously elite as elite as elite gets um, when he's when he's on the field. You can argue that well the injury issue. You know you want a guy who's on the field like Derrick Henry versus a guy who's missed time. But you know when you really do the math and you look historically, like it's almost it's almost the opposite. That's true in the sense that like. If you've been healthy for a long stretch, your injury is coming. Um, it, like truly, everybody misses games at the running back position. You're, you're saying now we're 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 now putting in your due. I'm not for an injury. I'm not calling that for an absurd. injury, and that's not the reason I'm doing this. But I remember um, your due several years ago. I man, what was it like 2012 or something? I, I can't remember the exact year when Adrian Peterson went down a, sure. early in the season and, and tore his ACL, and he tumbled in, in the draft the next year. I, I was well, a, he, had, he tore his ACL like at the end of the year. Uh, and, and he was about to uh, get to me at like pick nine. I really wanted him. He went at pick eight, and he, then he was the running back two the next year and was just dominant. You want to know why? Because he is crazy elite. He is, uh, you know, as, as peak an athlete at the position as you can have. And that's Saquon. I do... You know, the, we do need to be realistic with the specific injury because it was ACL, MCL, and 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 meniscus. 
Um, his, it was? His surgery was Are not you? until October. Um, so the, wow. it, it will be a slightly later timeline, but the timeline should put him you know, in by week one at, at, at full strength. But uh, it's worth at least noting that because if I don't have – I don't have any problem with someone that's like, I'm going Derrick Henry over Saquon 100 out of 100 times. That's a good piece of ammunition for that side of the argument. It's not just that. Uh, I'm not super concerned about the, the injury. It's the fact that the team is uh, bad. Now, they have added uh, Kenny Galladay, but Daniel Jones, as much as I've tried to support and believe in Daniel Jones, we still have – we do not have conclusive evidence that he can – consistently uh, lead an excellent offense. Now, he was up against it with no Saquon, so it's a chicken or the egg situation from last year. But their offensive line is terrible. You can look back. Uh, if you remember week one when when the Giants played, uh, I believe it was the Steelers, and um, we need to get – I'm going to try and pull that stat line up. But it was a, it was a, it was a primetime game, and Barkley could get absolutely nothing done in the running game, they were the offensive line was just devoured. He was, uh, he was he was excellent in the in the receiving game. He was six for sixty, but he was fifteen carries. Do you remember how bad it was, Jason? Yeah, I, it was sub ten yards, right? Fifteen carries for six yards. Yeah. but in fairness, that was also the Pittsburgh Steelers who bottled up a lot of great. Yes, running backs. It, it was. I know there was a the, he was up against it in week one. My point is simply. The offensive line is not going to be better. Saquon Barkley is a home run hitting running back where if the home run doesn't happen to come in that game, you get you get some performances like that. Now he pads it and he keeps you safe because of all the receiving exactly. work. I'm just explaining me the like why I would prefer Derrick Henry to Saquon Barkley. I think the Giants offense is going to be much improved this year. I, I think getting Saquon back, getting Kenny Galladay in, uh, allowing Sterling Shepard to be a two, that's what he is, um, and not have to try to be the guy. I, I think the offense has at least the chance. Like, you know, you try to set these young quarterbacks up to not just have no opportunity but failure ahead of them, and I think they've done that with Daniel Jones. That's not to say he'll succeed, but he has an opportunity to have a good offense this season. Next on our list, number six, Aaron Jones. I have him at number five. Jason and Andy have him. They both have him at number seven. Now, this like, this actually upsets me. Really? I can't believe you guys would would take – like, to seven, Aaron Jones has been dominant, has been dominant for fantasy football. The running back two in 2019, the running back five in 2020, and he did miss two games running backs all miss games however his consistency is an a on uh on the fantasy footballers.com you have one game one game last year where he's outside of the top 24 jamal williams is gone and to me that's that's an increase of passing down work for aaron jones yes aj Dillon and his quads and how much i love aj Dillon. he is there but aaron jones is the guy they just secured him they gave him the bag he is the guy. There's there's no doubt to me that Aaron Jones will be the primary running back. Uh, ninth most targets among running backs this past year. Fourth highest yards per touch at the running back position last year. Aaron Jones is a difference-making running back. Aaron Rodgers still has it. The, the Jeopardy skills as the host, that's TBD. But as a Hall of Fame quarterback, I don't know if that's to be determined. I feel like I determined that. Real quick, I've watched you're enough not, previews. You're, you're not giving him any no any leeway. No, he has. Uh, sorry, look, he's a great quarterback. <laughs> that was that's the end. <laughs> that, I mean, look, oh man, he's got the charisma. You're gonna of, kill him with silence of Jay Grizz over here. Like, oh. uh, yeah, I don't. The man was nervous. Uh, he he looked it. <laughs> yes, would you not be nervous if you there's Jason? You are you're going from this and you're going to go host Jeopardy. I don't think I'd be nervous because I don't care about Jeopardy. If you said I get to host Saturday Night Live, I'm sure I'd have some nerves. You're you would not be nervous to go host Jeopardy. I'd be nervous about. Do you know any big words around reading that all show? the big words? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and Aaron, and, and Rogers had to read those big yeah, words. But he's also very very smart. Yes. So I think he knows the words. 
which is impressive. Fair enough. I don't. I don't even know what we're talking about. Oh yeah, Aaron Jones. Uh, d- so defend yourself somehow that you're completely out on Aaron Jones. <laughs> Yes, when we're talking our top ten list, we have to really manufacture. Oh, we're out. He's my number seven running. You're back. out. I think he's great. I you made a lot of good points. The fact that Jamal Williams is gone and they paid up to keep him, I, I love it's it. Huge. He's going to be a great running back this season. There's a little bit of caution to me because we've seen really upsetting utilization in games before. Where at, this year it worked out because the consistency was there. When the games where he wasn't utilized much, the the touchdowns came. You remember. Two years ago, he's running back two, and he was like not consistent at all. Had thirty one percent bust games. I, I think that that could rear its face again. That's why he's seven. But I, I would love to have Aaron Jones on my team. No, you would not. Number seven, you'd prefer this guy. Yes, I would. Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys, old busted Elliott. Yeah, you've got him at number. I'm, eight. I got him at number eight. I'm I mean, out. You, hate, <laughs> you got him at eight because of your hate uh, uh. with Zeke here. I look. I talked about this on the. Um, I'm out. The things not to overreact, and I one of the things I wanted to remind myself and the audience to not overreact to is Zeke's down year. Zeke is 25 years old. He was the running back three while Dak was there. Dak went down. Andy Dalton went down. The offensive line went down, and Zeke wasn't that good. Now, when we say that Zeke was it a uh, Denucci? <laughs> Ben, yes, Ben, ben DiNucci. Ben that, DiNucci was going to save the team. That was a that was a fun time, and he was still a running back one. So it's like he was he had everything against him and had a terrible stretch of the season. He still finished as a running back one. I, I just think with Dak back, I love this offense. I don't really love this defense, which is great for fantasy. Um, I think you're going to see more of the same of what you've always seen from Zeke. He he didn't look bad on film to me. He looked like um, a guy with a worse offensive line and worse offense around him. Uh, number eight on the list is Nick Chubb. I have him at seven. Andy has him at eight. Jason has him down at eleven. His his pass catching running back who hates bias who now? is rearing its face, as Jason would say. Nick Chubb at eleven? Yeah, that's where he belongs. He's a back end RB one. That is unbelievable. Uh, I love Nick Chubb. Uh, last year in twelve games, one hundred ninety carries, over a thousand yards, twelve touchdowns. Only 18 targets. That part sucks, but like I said, I've just learned I'm going to embrace that Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry are outliers. Nick Chubb is elite. Nick Chubb is a home run hitting uh, running back. He has that in his arsenal. He also has uh, the number one rated offensive line following the 20, uh, 2020 season as per PFF and as per people who have eyeballs and watch the Cleveland Browns and see that those guys are just bullies up front pushing everybody around. I mean this is this is the ultimate mixture. Elite offensive line, elite runner. 11 is egregious. And and a and a very good very good defense that is going to keep them in games and allow him to continue to run, which is important for the non-pass catching running back. When I watch Nick Chubb, I have a good time. Like I yes. just enjoy life watching Nick Chubb run because he is amazing. And you're like, eh. That looks – I give that an, I don't know, 11. No, you know what I say? I say, ah, I'd give him the ball more because you brought up the two outliers, but there's only one outlier. It's Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry averaged 26 opportunities a game. He was tied for second in the NFL, whereas Nick Chubb averaged 17, tied for 18th in the NFL. And if you actually weight targets the way that you should because targets are more valuable than uh, rushing After coming attempts, back from his injury, he was 18 and a half. So okay, he was up a little bit more, but when you when you weight the targets, Derrick Henry was still the fourth mo- highest opportunity score. Whereas, let me find Chubb; he was twenty seventh. So it, that's how good he is. Oh, absolutely! And if you if he got the full workload, if he got a Derrick Henry workload, he would be in the top five for sure. Um, but when I look at these other options, I like guys that catch the ball obviously we've talked about that and he doesn't get the opportunity as much as I want him to I like him he's going he's going to finish as a running back one it'll be a back end RB1 because he doesn't have pass catching quick dynasty aside here Nick Chubb is 25 years old he is in a contract year with the Cleveland Browns I he seems like a player who's going to be re-signed are you 
do you have any concern like, of like trying to in dynasty trying to get out on Chubb right now or do you think that Nick Chubb has multiple years left I think he's he's got at least two this season and the next season I think are going to be good okay so you would you wouldn't necessarily be trying to trade him maybe after this year signs a big contract looks good as soon as you get into that second contract that's when I try to unload those guys number nine Johnny Taylor of the Indianapolis Colts the rookie sensation who has launched himself up the dynasty rankings it was this was a surprise I think to all three of all us, three of where us. when my rankings were done and again these are initial very early running back rankings but it's fun to do I put Jonathan Taylor I I put, I put him at nine yeah like I I want to put Jonathan Taylor higher I want I want to in my heart but I couldn't it, and then I'm like man where where are the guys gonna have Jonathan Taylor it's nines across the board. I had the exact same experience. I was like, oh, I'm going to be so much lower on JTT than Mike and Andy. Because we, we, we did the uh, you know our rankings separate, and then we put them together. And I couldn't believe that all of us had him at nine. I think that's going to be below where he's drafted, below his ADP. When you finish the season the way he did, people are hoping for the next great breakout. But I think that there are some major concerns here. Uh, Carson Wentz being, you know, the the number at the top. At the top, yeah. Um, you know, he's he's a question mark as far as is he a good quarterback? I don't know. We're gonna find out. <laughs> but the problem is, I like to know that it is a good quarterback. But more importantly, Philip Rivers is the king of dumping it off to the running back, and Jonathan Taylor, who we he has the ability to be a pass catcher, even though he didn't catch a lot of balls in college. Um, everyone's a pass catcher when you play with Phillip Rivers because he's throwing the ball, you know, those little check downs left, right, and center. I don't think that's going to happen. How many times would you be just furious watching Carson Wentz over the last couple of years when you've got a wide oh open running back, a wide, he's, there's nobody near him and he launches the ball 30 yards down the field. You, uh, are just going back to me the last year with Miles Sanders on my team, sc screaming that Miles Sanders is wide open and you should throw him the ball. Uh, I'm with I'm with you, Jonathan Taylor at nine. He's he's still solid. I would still like to have him on my team. Uh, what do you make anything of this, Jason? For his role on the team, this is a, this is another situation. Jonathan Taylor is an elite running back. He has he has elite talent, and his offensive line is excellent. Although Anthony Costanzo, left tackle, did yes. retire, so yeah. it's gotten worse. It, it has, but, but it is still good. It's still going to be an excellent offensive line. But you have Naheem Hines there. Marlon Mack is also back on a one-year deal. He's coming off an Achilles injury. That remains to be seen how uh, involved the team Marlon Mack will be. But do you make anything of this stat? Jonathan Taylor only averaged 45 rushing yards per game in Indianapolis losses. Um, You know, what I make out of that is... That's, it, that's called being game scripted out. Exa that's exactly right. He's not the pass catcher, even though he was catching passes from Phillip Rivers because everyone was. Naim Hines was the, the pass catching back. So if you're really in those two-minute drill situations, those come-from-behind situations, that's not that wasn't JTT. Now, whether it will turn into that, that's why I think he's going to be overdrafted because people are hoping it turns into that. And if it does... He won't be overdrafted. He'll, he is a, he, his talent is good enough to finish as the running back one if the opportunity is there. I think that team really likes Hines. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He, Hines, if you, if you go to like the running back, you know, whatever it is, 28, 30, he also played 16 games. Oh, did he? It's rare to do, but he did it. All right. And closing out our top 10. Oh, brother, here we go. Mm-hmm. You and me. The hype train is already leaving the station. It's not just us, but it's our show, so this, it's us. But it's us right now. <laughs> I have him at 10. Jason has him at 10. Andy has him at 11. Cam Akers from the Los Angeles Rams was a rookie last year, but I believe that all three of us see the same thing. You you saw the utilization of when they made the transition to Cam Akers and they said, you are the guy. And the opportunities went to full Todd Gurley scale. It was, how many times can we get Cam Akers the ball? It wasn't always pretty. It wasn't always effective. But they kept going to him over and over and over. The target share was not what I would want. 
But now Matthew Stafford is in town. Matthew Stafford is the franchise quarterback for the Rams, and Stafford has a long and storied history of, like Phillip Rivers, loving to check down to his running back when the deep uh, the deep shot is not there. So I got Akers at 10. How confident are you, Jason, that Akers is going to be a running back one in 2021, and what what could possibly go wrong? I've got him as a running back one right now in my rankings, but I, if I had to bet, I would bet against it in the sense that you know when you take the field um it's it's scary I think this is the scariest high ranking I have because you don't know for certain that it's going to be the Kim Akers show um you know he was injured in week one uh, after 14 carries which was great to see as the rookie comes out gets 14 carries gets injured misses wow, a couple games I forgot that. um and 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 then um doesn't really see double digit. He gets back in week five and then doesn't see double digit carries again as the season goes on. Daryl Henderson is 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 going well and it was kind of a one two punch and Cam wasn't even the one. Um, but later in the season, and then Henderson got hurt. Henderson got hurt and Cam showed what he can do, which was electric, was outstanding. Um, he's a young guy and I believe he converted to running back. I want to say he was a quarterback. So he, he didn't have a lot of experience at the position. He's still only 21 years old. He's younger than a lot of the rookies coming out. Um, and if he is given the opportunity that we saw at the end of the year, um, he will be awesome for fantasy. It was Todd Gurley's role, and he's not peak Todd Gurley, uh, but he is capable enough to be a top five running back. But how it goes wrong is, is simply um, – it's a timeshare that it's it's more what we saw in the middle of the season with Daryl Henderson that's that's not out of the question yeah it that's why I was throwing in there then Daryl Henderson got hurt at the end was the transition simply a product of that or I mean what was it Akers was a, a second round pick so I mean there was clearly a plan from Los Angeles that they needed to revamp the running back room and Cam Akers was going to be a very large plan and like once he really took over from week 13 moving forward including the playoff games I mean he's averaging well over 20 attempts a game if you can see that 20 attempt mark while getting the target increase from Matthew Stafford the volume is going to be the absolutely incredible the volume has the ability I agree with you that top five is in the cards for acres but it is a scary proposition that Perhaps the transfer was more related to an injury. But right now, I am betting on Acres. That's going to wrap up our top 10. Let me run it back real quick. CMC, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Derek Henry, Saquon Barkley, Aaron Jones, which you guys are too low on, Ezekiel Elliott, Nick Chubb, Jason, terrible ranking. Thank you. Jonathan Taylor, great job. Oh, great I ranking. appreciate it. Great ranking. And Cam Akers. Let's talk to Kyle Juszczyk. You talking to me? All right, the fantasy footballers are extremely excited to welcome in five-time Pro Bowler Harvard grad, fullback extraordinaire Kyle Yuschek to the show. Kyle, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. So excited to finally come on here. Been a an avid listener for probably three years now, so stoked to be a part of it. Oh my goodness! So an avid listener of the show. Very likable dude. I've heard you talk many times before, done interviews, and you still re-signed with our arch rival, the San Francisco 49ers. Do you know how awkward <laughs> that is for us on this show? I know. That's that's the one <laughs> tough part about listening is listening to your guys' uh, Cardinals fandom. That's the one thing i got to push through when I listen. Oh, does it come through on the show? I had no idea. <laughs> Yeah, just a little, just okay. a little bit. Well, I, I, you know, we, we would, uh, if you wanted to formally request a trade to the Cardinals on the show today, I wouldn't stop you. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the whole ten personnel, so uh, I don't want to, you know, interrupt your guys' love for DeAndre Hopkins and Larry Fitz and everybody else out there. <laughs> well, we're thrilled to have you on today. Um, you know the the fullback position. That is, that's a position. There's a lot of dirty work involved. We've got Ron Wolfley out here on the air all the time, and um, you know he talks about his time as a fullback. I remember watching Vonta Leach. Like that's one of the names that jumps out to me 
uh, lead blocking for for Arian Foster in Houston. And there are certain fullbacks that are just really fun to watch play the game. You're one of those guys, um, and I really appreciate what you do on the field. Talk about returning to San Francisco. How certain were you when the season ended that you were coming back? Yeah, well, before I get in that, quick shout out to Leach because uh, that was my mentor. He uh, oh nice. He was in Baltimore when I when I got drafted there, and yeah, uh, I got to spend a year with him and and learn under him. Uh, so big time mentor for me and really helped me, um, transition and, you know, kind of figure out what it's like to play fullback in the NFL. Um, but returning to San Francisco, it was, it was a whirlwind of emotions, man. Um, when the season ended, I, I genuinely did not know if I would be back or not. Um, a lot of things were coming into play. You know, I, I'm, I'm older now, I'm married, uh, I want to start a family soon and, we're all out on the East coast. Um, my family's from Cleveland. My wife's family is from New York. Mm -hmm. And so being on the West coast, it, it can be difficult, you know, when, from a real world perspective, not just playing football. Um, so that was something I was going to have to weigh into my free agency decision this time that was a little different than when I was, uh, 24 years old you know, and <laughs> just finished my rookie contract. Um, so I had to think about that, had to think about, um, you know, just where, where I felt our, our program was going in, in San Francisco. And, you know, we had a lot of free agents and uh, it looked like the team could uh, look a lot different this season. Um, but ultimately, you know, I couldn't turn down the opportunity to play in Kyle's offense and, and stay home uh, where I've been and feel so comfortable and uh, just so genuinely happy to go to work there every day. And um, luckily enough, our, our team ended up basically we're looking about the same as we did the past couple of years, um, added a few additions, but they did a really good job of uh, re-signing all the, the free agents um, that we had come up. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, I want to talk a little bit about Kyle Shanahan and the offense here in a couple minutes, but yeah, I do think that people forget in the free agency period, especially fantasy players, because, you know, like it or not, we're so dialed into stats and how, how players perform for your team and, I mean, as you listen to the show, so you know that that aspect of it. But I do think we forget all of the real world implications for these moves. <laughs> you know, there's a person, Definitely. there's a family. You're living in one place. You're raising a family, and um, you know, I, I just remember talking to to David Johnson out here uh, a while back about those factors and in, in how they come into play. But but you know, you listen yeah. to the show, you know, the fantasy football world in general. How do you view fantasy in the context of like your experiences with it and with fans and, and the NFL in general? Yeah, you know, I've been playing fantasy football since, man, when I was, I feel like, in middle school or early high school. And I, I've always enjoyed it for what it is, man. I think it gives a lot of people more reasons to, to watch the game and maybe watch games that you wouldn't normally be interested in. You know, all of a sudden you got, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, a Carolina Panther tight end on your team that <laughs> before you never cared about the Panthers, but all of a sudden now you have something invested in it. And uh, so I think it's, I think it's fun, man. And I think it brings more fans to the game and uh, just, you know, brings more excitement to games that maybe you wouldn't have cared about before. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of us connect with it is, is you have like, you know, Monday night football games between maybe teams with bad records and everybody in your league is glued to the screen to see what happens and how it shakes out in your league. Um, were you playing a lot more in your early Baltimore high reception total days? Was that, uh, did that play a part? <laughs> I was definitely on my own roster more back <laughs> in those days. <laughs> you know, there, there are now it's funny. You... Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say there aren't a lot of fullbacks that can uh, be drafted for fantasy, and you've been in that category before, where you've been you've been run out there and started, and that is an impressive feat. <laughs> yeah, you know it, it's I've now I'm to the point where only in extreme emergency situations will I plug <laughs> myself into a roster. <laughs> um, uh, but it's funny, so often I'll I'll get people, you know, they'll ask me for you know fantasy advice, and they'll 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 DM me and be like, hey, like I drafted you in my fantasy league. And I said, good luck, because I don't think your season's going to look too good if you had to use the traffic <laughs> on me. I'm just, I, I know fantasy well enough that uh, I'm not your number one option in that running back slot. Uh, 
fantasy football and real football are just a little bit different. I know we, I was actually talking to the producers before um, you hopped on just about all of those like intangible factors in the real game where, you know, I think it's easy for fantasy players to say, oh, you know, this guy's not, he, his yards per carry is a little lower than this guy. Why are they putting him out on the field? And like, there are so many pieces to the game where you don't, you know, they don't show up in the stat sheet. You know, if a if a player like Chase Edmonds out here, one of our, our running backs in Arizona, he's a really high IQ guy on the field. And, and you don't have a stat for, you know, being in the right place at the right time or like, you know, when Kyler's under Absolutely. pressure, you, you end up, you know, available to him. And those are things that that's always going to be a disconnect, I think, between the world of stats and fantasy and analytics and then how a coach makes a real decision. Most definitely. I think it's it's hard to find a, a stat column to give you points for your pass blocking protection or, <laughs> yep. um, you know, being, you know, or if, it, if an offensive lineman in front of you makes a mistake and you cover up that mistake, um, it, you know, it's just hard to reward points in those categories. Yeah, for sure. So let's let's talk about Kyle Shanahan. Let's talk about being a part of this offense. You know, fantasy players, uh, they look at Kyle and what he does in San Francisco putting players in a position to do what they do best, um, whether it's yourself, uh, you know, for fantasy players, Debo, Kittle, Ayuk, uh, Mostert last year. What makes him special as a play caller? And and you talked about that being a big factor in, in coming back to San Francisco and being in that offense. What sets him apart? I think kind of like what you said, he, he puts guys in positions to succeed. He has such a knack for that and really um, – accentuating your strengths and you know you know i'll give you an example for like debo samuel the guys you know he's i think somebody this offseason said he's uh marshawn lynch in a wide receiver's body <laughs> and so kyle kyle will take advantage of that in every game plan we have two or three carries uh built in there for debo where he's gonna take some kind of handoff whether it's from the backfield or taking a reverse um but that's a strength of his and he knows that he just needs to get the ball in Debo's hands, however it is, yeah. you know, whether it's a screen, a handoff, a quick hitch, um, because he knows that he can take advantage with yards after catch from there. Um, but, you know, same thing, you know, with, uh, with Debo, with Ayuk, with George, myself, uh, Raheem. He just knows uh, what our strengths are, and he does such a good job of putting us in positions that we can take advantage of that. Yeah, and, and you know, fantasy players – love knowing that he's going to do that when players uh go to san francisco they can you know that predictability aspect is is huge for fantasy is there uh is there a player on this team right now that fantasy players are maybe not aware of or are underestimating coming into the new year i know we dealt with you guys dealt with a lot of injuries last year and so the you know the, the running back core for example you saw different people out there every mm -hmm. week but yeah. is there somebody that, that comes to mind that, that you've played with that you're saying you're expecting big things from? Yeah, you know, you talk about predictability in fantasy football, and I know that's that's kind of um, – I feel like Kyle plays both sides of that because we, you know, we'll use so many different running backs in a season or we spread the ball out so much that sometimes it, our offense is pretty hard to predict who's going to ball or who's going to get the ball. Um, but you know what? I think that – Raheem Mostert is really going to surprise people. And I know it's been a few years since we've, um, the Niners have had, you know, one of those top fantasy guys that, you know, that you're going to take in your first, you know, yeah. one, two or three rounds. Like uh, you, you could argue uh, Kittle's definitely been up there, but um, outside of that, you, you know, we really haven't had a wide receiver or running back that you really talk about up there in the top of the draft. And, um, I think Raheem Mostert is going to be a guy that at the end of the season, um, you might have wished that you had gone up there and spent a little more draft capital to get him. Because um, I, I can tell you firsthand uh, what big plans we have for him. And uh, at the end of last season, uh, when he came back and was healthy, we genuinely thought that with like six games left that we could still get him to 1,000 yards uh, just based on what he had done earlier in the season. And what we had seen on the practice field, this guy is just absolutely insane in the open field. Uh, extremely so explosive. Nobody can catch him. It's yeah, it's ridiculous. Like the angles these safeties try to take on him, and he still will leave them in the dust. 
Um, I think there's still a lot uh, in front of Raheem, and I think uh, a big year is coming for him. Well, that's exciting to hear. And if you if you want to just text me the game plan before each week, uh, that will help <laughs> fantasy players a lot. <laughs> uh, I, about four, about fifteen weeks out of the year, I can do that for you. Those, <laughs> those other two. Oh, I, I don't see. Think I can let you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll find our way to the the locker room here in Arizona. All right, I, yeah, I do exactly. have. Uh, I got a couple more questions for you. One is just navigating this whole. Uh, you know, San Francisco made big news with the trade to the number three spot. And um, I'm going to try not to put you in any weird position here. But, look, mm-hmm. this this was a huge move. Um, we know that, that you're drafting a quarterback at three. We know Jimmy Garoppolo is on the roster, and he's been your quarterback for years. Um, was that a surprise to you? And, like, how how do you kind of approach that piece? I mean, you know, the quarterback's the most important position in all of sports. And you know that there's going to be some variables there this year. Like, how did you take that news? Yeah, um, it definitely was a little bit of a surprise. And it, it came with um, a little bit of excitement, but also a little bit of, um, you know, un- unsuredness. Just because it's so hard to predict um, what rookies are going to be able to do and how their game translates. And, you know, you, you definitely get the excitement of, you know, the number three pick, you're getting a top tier talent, man. You're getting somebody that is coveted around the league, uh, somebody special, especially in this year's uh, yeah. quarterback draft class. There's some really special talent there. So um, excited about that. But, you know, like I said, you never know how it's going to translate. And also just, you know, from the personal side, it you know, Jimmy has, you know, been a great friend, great teammate. And uh, when he's healthy, he's been a, a great player yeah. uh, for us. So, you know, you feel – different ways about that um but at the end of the day as a player you just you just have to put all your faith in into kyle and 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 lynch and that they're making the best decision for the team and you know as it stands now jimmy's still on the roster so um i I anticipate that he most likely is gonna you know start the season off for us uh you know don't know if that necessarily is the case or not but that's kind of what i'm envisioning Maybe like, you know, the, the Alex Smith to, to Patrick Mahomes transition. Um, I, I could see that being feasible. But, you know, I don't know. We're just going to have to take it in stride. And um, I'm, I'm going to support whoever's under center, whether it's, it's Jimmy or, or our, uh, our rookie quarterback. So I, I think either way we're going to be successful. Yeah, it's one of, the, one of the many big questions to be answered with the draft coming up here at the end of the month. And I know fantasy players and NFL fans are, are really, really excited to see what happens. We we get to speculate now and then find out a lot more very soon. Um, I do want to close out with a question from one of our uh, staff writers, uh, fullback fan extraordinaire Jeff Greenwood, who who daps uh, you, Patrick Ricard, many of the fullbacks up on on socials all the time. And uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this question to him. All right. Hey, Juice, big fan. You're one of my favorite players on and off the field, and I really respect what you're doing for fullbacks along with some other guys in the league. I mean, you're, you're a, a selfless leader, and you don't see that much. So um, I appreciate you, and I think a lot of people can learn from what you do on the field. I've got a question I've been you know, waiting a long time to ask you, and um, I, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. What's your favorite juice? <laughs> <laughs> hard like hitting, hard hard hitting question there. I, I I hate to put you in the awkward position, but uh, favorite juice, juice. Welch's white grape juice. Oh, you had that. You had that answer ready. You've been asked that before. Oh yeah, I've been asked before, and that's an easy one for me. That's that's <laughs> that was a staple as a kid. <laughs> well, that's gonna let fantasy managers know a whole lot heading into the new season. Yeah, I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, glad you you've been a listener for years. That's been really fun on social media, and uh, wish you the very best. Uh, if you want to take a couple games off a year, I can show you which two to take off. But um, <laughs> we really appreciate you coming on, man. Have a great one. Yeah, it's been, it's been great talking with you, man. All right. Kyle Juszczyk of the San Francisco 49ers. Now, Kyle knows the show, and he knows yes. us, and he knows fantasy, and he's he's getting me he's getting me a little hyped up for Raheem there Mostert. There you go. Well, he, the verbiage of going with, talking about the, the plan 
mm-hmm. for Raheem. That that's a difference. Mm-hmm. That is, Tevin Coleman's gone. causes heavy breathing, <laughs> and I, I I love me some Jeff Wilson, but I also love Raheem Mostert. So it will be fascinating to see what San Francisco does uh, with their running backs and at pick number three. Who are, are who do you got? Pick number three. Who is it in? Um, I, I, I'm still going to stick with uh, who it should be and go with Justin Fields. Yes, I'm going to stick with Justin but man, Fields as well. Seems like it's going to be Mac Jones. <laughs> don't, don't turn on me now. All right, we'll see. Before we close out, I want to thank Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. That's pristineauction.com. Right now, Right now, there's an Alvin Kamara signed Saints full size authentic on field speed helmet with a current bid price of twenty bucks. Or there is a Saquon Barkley signed Giants jersey inscribed. He wrote 2018 NFL Rookie of the Year, Ooh. going for just over fifty three dollars. Remember, you only pay for what you bid. Pristine Auction. I have personally used their site probably hundreds of times now. Uh, and remember, if you sign up with the code BALLERS, you're going to get a $10 credit. That's pristineauction.com, and the code is BALLERS. Jason, that is going to do it for the show. For me, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, my best best friend, Jason Moore, and the Cardboard Bear extraordinaire. Goodbye. We'll see you with Running Back Rankings Part 2 on Thursday. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.